and please understand as I talk about these things, this has nothing to do with like hate speech or judgment or being divisive or anything like that. I just made a video about my old co-workers, which I can talk about, you know, many people that I worked with and were friends with, gay people, I've been friends with a uh, trans person before, it's none of that. All I'm doing right now is tapping you in and putting you on the game on a deeper level of what it is that you're witnessing, observing, and watching when you watch these award shows. They're rituals. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, first things first, half rack of ribs into a pan like this. Don't worry about this. I just defrosted this in the microwave. These were fresh yesterday. I just froze them and then I got wings today, but that happened in the microwave. So a little par cook. They're brand new and fresh and fine. Don't worry about that. And then I literally do nothing but salt and pepper. Salt to obviously tenderize and for flavor, but copious salt and copious pepper. For me, ribs are all about just getting them tender. And then once we've achieved the tender cook, then it's all about just putting sauce on them and building those layers of sauce. And for me, it's all about sweet baby Ray. And as easy as one, two, three, you just enclose them tight so they're gonna steam in there. Three and a half hours, 325. I like coleslaw for a little palate cleanser when I'm having wings and ribs. It has a little, a little fresh and clean something on the side so we're making coleslaw dressing, mayo, white wine vinegar, sugar, and you whip. Also have this last bit of red pepper I need to use up. Dice it real nice and small, minced almost basically. Add that. And of course we're just going with the bag slaw. Ain't nobody got time to actually shred cabbage when you can get a bag for $1.50. Pre-made. And we stir that up. Taste test. Incredible. All right, keeping it classic with crispy bar style wings done in the air fryer. So we go in with some oil on the outside as per usual. We sprinkle with salt to get that extra crisp and draw moisture. Also the oil lends to getting more crispy because it's a fat source. And my local purveyor only had drums today, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, we miss the flats around here, but they'll do. Uh, these are gonna go in the air fryer on 400 maximum temperature for 35 minutes and you can shake them at about 23 minutes, 22 minutes to like move them and flip them around. That way the skin will release from the bottom of the tray and then you can cook the other side for the remainder. Well, 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 if it isn't that time, time to build some bark. So we get the first layer of baby rays on and then we brush her around, even distribute. And then I got the uh, oven here on with the broiler on on high. Just put that under there for a while, keep an eye on it and let this start to candy paint these ribs and build that bark on these ribs. All right, off they go. All right, y'all, now is about the time where I give them a shake. I get them to release, all right? Get them to release. And then I just crisp up the last bit of them for another, I don't know, five minutes, maybe something like that. So here we are, first layer of candy paint. First layer of that bark, that candy paint. And then we go in to build another layer. All we're doing here is lightly burning sugar into a texturalized component of a dish. That makes it, oh, ever so delicious. And so we go back to build more flavor. All right, these have had a little bit of a rest. Let's go ahead and give these a nice slice and make them into nice little biteables. Oh, don't lose that top skin. Oh, that's tender. That's tender. Come on. Cooperate with me now. They're falling apart. They're really, really falling apart. Super tender. 
That's when it gets risky. When they're that tender. That's when I get frisky. <laughs> when they're that tender. Uh, come on. Work with me. Alright. Ribs. On the plate. Gotta make some room for the wings though. Crispy bar wings are spicy ketchup, as they say in the industry. And they do actually say that in the industry. When you get a pound of medium, you just call it spicy ketchup. And we shake. And we rattle. those right up in your face stack them high pile them high and then on the back side the palate refresher that crispy cold slaw cold slaw cold slaw or cold slaw it's both look at that though mm -hmm. alright y'all you tell me that ain't a nice plate. That plate's something else. I'll tell you what. It's for my boy Matt. Let's do it. All right, y'all. A uh, hoodie cult classic. A wings for sure. Coleslaw being a favorite. And y'all know that I love the primal nature of a rib. I love ribs. I love wings. I love coleslaw. I love all of this. And uh, I love my boy Matt for coming through randomly in the uh, PayPal. Hit me with a very nice generous donation so thank you brother we had some chats though uh we had a little deep message with each other um essentially he wanted a rib wing combo that's what he was looking for so i believe i've served that up for you and on that he likes kind of the the deeper uh type <clears throat> video chat conversations where my mind goes on these things but this isn't even where my mind goes this is real as shit but let's talk about <laughs> the super satanic sam smith performance at the grammys this past sunday and how i watched them with my mom and everything to do with that so so before we get into that i'm going to get into a few bites on things and i'll tell you this little story here and we'll talk about this sam smith uh well ritual really is what it is it's not a performance it's a ritual but we'll talk about that you gotta have the eyes to see and the ears to hear but <laughs> we're keeping it crispy with the water today when I eat saucy, spicy things, I just need the freshness of a water for the palate. So I'm going immediately for, for a rib, actually, because they were just so candy coat. Absolutely tender and tempting me. And I'm going to go right for this edge piece. I love the crispy, crispy edge. So there you go, my brother. We already have a piece that just fell off. No. I don't know. I'm also going to have to move this coleslaw. Have to move this coleslaw off to the side here a little bit. Because it's in my eating area. All right. I'm not going to get super... I don't want to get too deep. Into everything of all that I know about the world. <laughs> and celebrities and those all in power in the chain of command and what religion the world by and large in the for those who control things in the world what they subscribe to but we'll get into it a little bit but anyways the story starts with my mom invited me over to watch to have dinner and watch the Grammys. 
She loves award shows. She always has. She loves artists. Actors. All that. She loves the entertainment space. Big, big fan. Which many of us are, right? But my eyes opened a long time ago. To the... Nature of that industry the Freemasonic nature of that industry. Uh, sort of what their principles are, the deities or the gods or whatever they believe in and all that, which is basically Satanism at its core, pretty much. Um, but they believe in the duality, the white and the dark, and the wholeness of a human, basically. Like, you can be good and philanthropic and do good things in the world and... and uh, you know, spread your your messages and uh, through your talents and entertain people. And uh, this is Ranch, by the way. Make a shit ton of money. And uh, have charities and all these things and what have you. <laughs> but then there's a the dark side. which in these Skull and Bones-esque societies in control positions, people of power influence over the masses, and celebrities aren't even... It all goes back to ancient Egypt, essentially. So a pyramid. Everything in our society is pyr pyramidal in terms of hierarchy. And there's the people at the top and the people at the bottom. <clears throat> Right. So top of the pyramid being like Bezos, Musk, even families in the shadows that you don't even know what you can't see. Central banking systems. Uh, anybody in control of major things in the world. Money, import, export. Oil guns, all the dark seedy shit of the world, or the people, the things that people fight for, and go to war for and shit, that's the capstone of the pyramid, so, the very top, the final piece of the pyramid, right, the cornerstone of the pyramid being the first laid brick of the pyramid, so, mathematically speaking, the pyramid is built correctly and structurally sound and is effectively a proper pyramid, right? Anyways, why do you think you have pyramid schemes in the world? The entire world is a pyramid scheme. Why do you think in school you were taught about the food pyramid? <laughs> and which food at the capstone of the pyramid takes precedent, precedent, precedence? Or every other type of food. Well, it's the same thing with humans, right? Celebrities are like, I'll put up a, the ancient Egyptian version of this from way back in the day, but they had a hierarchy too. They were like the peasants, the working class, the sheep, the chattel, the workforce. The everyday average Joe, me, you, most people. And then you get up to artisans and craftsmen and people with higher skills. And then you get into people with political power. And then you get into the servants of the kings and the queens, which are basically the celebrities in today's, today's day and age. They get their major movie roles and they get to headline Coachella and they get to make all this money as long as they agree to the principles of that religion or 
that uh, faction, that sect, whatever you want to call it, they agree to the oath. Secret oath. Oh. I'll put up a thing right here. You can watch it for a sec while I talk. It's a montage, essentially, of just celebrities all doing the vow of silence, the, the, the one eye, the all-seeing eye, the eye of Horus. It goes back to Egyptian times. They all do it. They took an oath. They're in a coven. It's fucking obvious at this point. There's many more signs and symbols. It's all symbolism. But anyways, I'm basically so numb to this shit at this point. It's all second nature to me. It's old hat. Like I just I've known about this shit forever. Anyway, so my mom invites me, and she believes like she doesn't like like dark energy. Like she's very like that. She's she like rebukes the type of devil type energy and shit like that. And so we're watching, we have dinner, she cooks a nice little dinner, and then we're watching, starting to watch the show, and uh, we're watching all the awards, and with every single, like, nominee and all that, and who's up for an award, during the run reel. I'm so tapped into the code. I know exactly who's going to win with everything. I literally bat, well, I was batting 100. Because I can see through the code because I understand their philosophies and principles. And I know the agenda that they're pushing in the world. The ad, the androgen gen, gen agenda, the Baphomet agenda, the hybrid agenda, the transgender, all that agenda. But I also can see, and I also know, who their most valued soldiers are in the coven. So for every, so Harry Styles was an obvious choice for a win. Kendrick Lamar was an obvious choice for the win. And everybody who was winning, I was just like, oh, she's going to win, he's going to win. He's, she's going to win, he's going to win. And my mom's like, how do you keep getting that right? And I'm like, I'm not clairvoyant. I'm tapped into what I'm watching. I'm watching a ritual, right? This is before the Sam Smith performance. Now, why do you think... Why do you think... These Hollywood... Which, by the way... Magic wands used to be fashioned out of the tree of holly, Hollywood, the wood of holly. You make you used to fashion wands out of the the tree of holly, Hollywood. So that's how they used to make magic wands, which is wands, whatever. It's the city of lost angels, lost Los Angeles, lost angels, fallen angels. Hmm, <laughs> seems a little simple to me. Anyways, that's where you make movie magic. But. I keep getting this shit just bang on correct. My mom's like, what's going on here? I'm like, because I know what I'm watching. I'm watching a ritual. It's on Sunday. Just like Christians, Catholics, whoever. Go to church on Sunday. They televise their rituals over, they broadcast it over the whole world on Sundays. That's why it's on a Sunday. The Grammys, the Tonys, the Emmys, the these, all the award shows. It's just a ritual. And they get gold statues like sarcophagus pharaohs. In their tomb, like you look at the statue and you're like, oh, that's just a rendition of an Egyptian pharaoh, <laughs> right? So it's very obvious. So I saw, excuse me, saw Sam Smith's outfit on the red carpet with his harem with him, right? Of occultic, demonic, gothic little ghouls in their cloaks. 
and gowns. Him being the head bitch. With the uh, featured artist or the main artist on the track that he featured with Unholy. So it's right there, Unholy. <laughs> and uh, that person is a, is a transgender person, man to woman, right? And that's the agenda, right? We know this. If you're awake to the world and you're not stupid, you know this. Sorry, not stupid. I don't mean to say that. Ignorant. If you're not paying attention. There's a difference between stupidity and ignorance. So if you're ignorant to the world, you're just not paying attention. It's all good. It's not your fault. You're just under a spell, as we all are and have been. Um, so yeah, it's pretty obvious to me that he's going to have a live performance unholy. He's definitely the spokesman right now at at these performance at this performance to push the agenda. And so his performance was coming up. I also told my mom he would win the award that he won for his song, which he did. Or their song. The They Them song. Unholy. So, and I'm like, his performance is coming up. And I told her, I'm like, it's going to be very demonic. So I'm like, if you want to watch it, watch it. But if you don't want to watch it, I'm telling you now. It's going to be very demonic. It's going to be Satan-centric, right? Um, so, of course, his performance starts, and immediately it's just like, it's the trans person artist, I, I can't remember their name, They're, I'm blanking on their name right now, gets risen up in a cage, right? In prison bars, in this little prison cage. In red dress, sacrificial dress, color, right? So, imprisoned, in bondage. On either side of the cage, you have what look like impossibly tall women, men dressed as women, in latex, cat suits, whips and chains type thing. And then you have the Inferno, Brimstone, burning in the background. You have Sam Smith at the forefront on a circle. Which if you saw the stage from the top down, bird's eye view, you would probably see that it's a some sort of an all-seeing eye or maybe a pentagram or a hexagonal Star of David. Because Star of David, Judaism's all mixed in with the shit. This is all hermetic hermetic teachings, the Kabbalah and all this, it's all intertwined, right? This is what Kanye's always been saying about, you know, Kanye's being deemed as this anti-Semite, but it's like, real, real spit, the, the, the principles that these people who run these industries stand for all stem from those religions, from those times, like from uh, Egypt, Greek, Greece, Greece, Roman times, all that shit, it all stems from there. So... I mean, Kanye's not wrong. He's a little extreme in what he was saying, but he's not wrong, really. So anyways, <laughs> most likely you'd see something like that if you saw it from a top down, but you didn't see it from top down. You see it from the front. And he is in his, like, big red sacrificial-looking cloak. And please understand, as I talk about these things, this has nothing to do with, like, hate speech or judgment or being divisive or anything like that. I just made a video about my old co-workers, the Chicken Taco video. Many people that I worked with and were friends with, gay people, I've been friends with a uh, trans person before. It's none of that. All I'm doing right now is 
tapping you in and putting you on the game on a deeper level of what it is that you're witnessing, observing, and watching when you watch these award shows. They're rituals. So look it up. You can try to refute it, but you can't. It's true and obvious. Only difference is these rituals and these principles get broadcast through the mainstream media to millions and trillions, well, not trillions, but millions of, if not billions of people to watch and see and everybody crowds around. And fawns over them. Um, Catholics and Christians alike. And they... Love all their favorite rappers and singers and celebs and actors. And don't seem to realize what you're partaking in by watching that and absorbing that. But, completely up to you now. From what I can deduce about these religions, Freemasonry being, you know, maybe the main one, but, you know, Mithra, all these things, same, same kind of difference, is that it's kind of a, a religion of, like, I mean, the teachings of Aleister Crowley and Anton LaVey are pretty extreme. That's the part of these religions that's dark and seedy. Those are the nefarious areas that get dicey. The do as thou wilt as it pertains to back door, back room activities, things done in the shadows. That's where shit gets sketchy. But as far as I can tell, in terms of like Satanism, is basically a revolt against the constricting of one's whole self, including the shadow self. So your sexual side, your taboo side, your your unsavory side, though, to be the whole you, to not hide it and be afraid and shy away. So that's why you get people with tats and piercings and artists and crazy hair and it's a place where they feel free to be themselves that being said there's an extreme to that though which is the trafficking the like Theo Vaughn says the dark arts they exist in the world so it's a risky ridge to run if you will if you want to embark down those roads But these people at these award shows, whom you idolize, have in essence and in effect taken an oath or a vow of silence in exchange for influence, for fortune, for, for fame, for the big name, for the screen time, for the money. For the goblets and the rubies that exist in this material realm so that they can have a good life, the best life in the here and the now and they captivate your mind and they captivate your attention and they pretend like they love you and they charge you $300 
$300 a ticket for the nosebleeds. They don't give a shit about you. They care about maybe their direct family, their cohorts, their team, and how nice their life is as soon as they leave the stage. Most usually. But, you know, like I said, that's a duality though. There are some that are very philanthropic and they they help people too with their money. But you have the question, what other shady shit have they done? Had, did they have to do to be where they are? You don't get to have that much influence, power and fame over the masses of the world without cutting a deal of some sort. That's just the fact of the matter. Just like the president takes an oath, police officers take oaths, all these things. These singers, these actors, they all take, take an oath too. And when they say on the stage that they'd like to thank God, generally speaking, it's not the same God that you have in mind, you know? So there's that. Everything I touched on here is can be extrapolated upon like certain points can be extrapolated upon very very deeply but this is just a quick synopsis of packing in something that could unpack for so long there's so much information especially if you're not privy to any of it but I feel like so many people in the world are now at this point it's just very blatantly obvious like his performance couldn't have been any more in your face obvious right and if this if, if at this point you still try to be like conspirator you're a conspiracy that didn't happen there's no way that it's like just go watch <laughs> jay-z did a five minute song with this whole thing called the last supper and it was super dark and like edgy and like demonic <laughs> so it's just like pay attention just pay attention Outside of that, this was obviously delicious. Very, very good. Really, like, super top-tier good. Amazing. And uh, thank you, Matt. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know if you're tapped in or privy to the shit. I don't know how you feel about it. But that's just the true spill. Um, and uh, once again, thank you for uh, the support, coming through, sponsoring, and uh, providing me this delicious plate. And then some. Okay. Love y'all. Till the next one. You can live well. Keep your eyes open and stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.